Exodus chapter 14, verse 13. I mean, the guys, the gals, the families, they're in a rock and a hard place, literally. They got the Red Sea in front of them. They got mountains on each side of them. And they got the Egyptian army behind them, breathing down their back. They're complying, they're complaining and whining and griping and saying, Moses, why'd you bring us out here to die? And Moses said to the people, look, he said, don't be afraid, stand still, see the salvation of the Lord that he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you will see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you will hold your peace. Man, that sounds like a good confession right there. Woo-wee, that's a humdinger of a faith confession. Look what God is going to do. Let's sit back and watch what God does. Because you know God is due time. And you know time, whoo, time's starting to run out. I, I can hear the horses coming. All right, guys, let's go. Let's get this thing going. We're about to die here. Notice what God said. Look at the very next verse. He said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Why are you whining? Tell the children of Israel to do what? Do something. Go forward toward what is absolutely impossible. He says, Start, go, go toward the sea. And then, verse 16, he said, But lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea, and you divide it. My Lord! Look what God did. He divided that red sea. No, he said, Moses, you do. Oh, guys, here's Moses. Hey, guys, look what God's going to do. He's all powerful. He's all sufficient. He is a sovereign God. He is awesome. Look what he's going to do for us. Step back and watch the salvation of the Lord. Cricket. And God said, why are you whining to me? You've got the rod. You've got the anointing. You put your hand out there and you divide it. You do something. And then, when they got across, if you keep reading, when they got across the Red Sea, you know what God said? He looked at Moses, he said, now stretch out your rod and cause it to close. Well, he could have said, well, once we get across, I mean, God will take care of the rest. No, God said, you do it. Remember, the power of the Lord was present too. God had promised Abraham, you're going to have a child, but, but Abraham had to wait 20 years till he got in faith. God, God, God was waiting on him. I mean, there's story after story after story after story all throughout the Bible. These are real life situations in which every single time somebody receives something because they not only believed something and not only said something, but they also went out and they did something. But it's not just about doing anything. It's about doing what God said to. It's not just about doing anything. Because there's some Christians that have this understanding and, and they're trying everything. They're pulling every lever and pushing every button and turning every knob and trying to find which action, which thing is going to work. And then it leaves people frustrated because what you're doing is you're working and you're working and you're working. What this is, is it requires you to have a fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And you find out from God, all right, Lord, what, what, what is it I need to do? What is it I need to change? What part of my belief system do I, do I need to tweak? Because I'm, I'm the one missing it somewhere. Where is it? What do you need me to do?